Splitting a database is just like it sounds. It's dividing it into two, where you get a front end and a back end. On the front end, it'll contain all the objects like your queries, forms, reports that the front end user is going to be using. And it's going to be linked to the back end, which contains only the raw data or tables. If it's not linked, then on the front end, when somebody opens up a form or report, they won't be able to pull over any data. Now the back end is going to be stored on the server. That's accessible across the network to the front end. The front end is going to be stored on the user's local computer. So for example, if you have 20 users that need access to the database here, we can copy the front end database 20 times and add it to the desktops of their computers that they can then access the raw data across the network, the back end database that's stored on the server. Now there are four benefits for splitting the database that I can think of. One is performance. Performance where only the shared data is sent across the network as opposed to all the data and slowing down the network. And then reliability, where if the front end user encounters a problem or a corrupted file, it's usually limited to that copy of the front end user's database on his machine. And then third, flexibility, where the front end user can create their own forms, queries, and reports without affecting other users. So they can go ahead and junk up their forms and tweak it, whatever they want to do, and not have other users go, hey, I liked it the way it was. Because on their computer, they can go ahead and mess with their front-end database and make it what they want, or their forms and reports. And then finally, administration. The admin has only one copy of the database to manage and protect, and that's the back end, the raw data, the one that contains only the tables. So to go ahead and split this thing, let's come up here and click on the Database Tools tab. Go to the Move Data group, and it's right there. You got one cylinder splitting off into two, and you can see in the pop up that it says you can split a database into two files one containing the tables and one containing the queries and forms. Go ahead and click on it, and it says, Would you like to split the database now? Okay, got a lot of extra stuff here. You can read about it. Let me go ahead and show you, though. Click on Split Database, and then it says, Okay, where do you want to store the back end? You can see it says Create a Back End. Now, it doesn't say front end, but what it does is it takes your original database here and converts that to the front end. So first of all, before it converts it, we've got to have a back end. And where do we want to store this? On my desktop. Sounds good. What's the name? It's going to be the same name as the front end, but it's going to add an underscore and BE for back end. You can change it and call it, this is my spiffy, happy-go-lucky back end, whatever you want to name it. But I'll leave it as is. Keep it simplistic, at least for me. So the name, underscore BE for back end, click split, and then it says it was done successfully. Now when I click okie dokie, watch what happens to the original database here, over here, the tables, because it's going to be converged to the front end. So it won't store the raw data, the tables, in the front end, but watch what happens when I click okie dokie. Do you remember what these arrows mean? Of course you do, because you watched all the access training videos. And if you haven't, well, you may be missing out on something. Not in this part, because I'm going to explain it. It's the links for the data that's contained herein to the back end. And you can see when I hover over it, you get the address. That points on the desktop to the integration underscore BE. And again, the arrows indicate that that's the link to the table. So it's storing nothing in these tables. But you can go ahead and double-click to open it up. And it's displaying it because it's pulling it in so you can see it because it's linked to the data on the back end. Just like the forms here that are linked to the tables that when it looks at the table it goes, hey, there's nothing in us here. You have to go to this address and then it quickly goes to the address, pulls the data in, and then it pulls it into the form that's based upon that table. And of course, just like you can in normal tables, you can with these linked tables right click and go to the design view and check it out. Let's go ahead and close out. And let's close out of here because on my desktop we have the front end, it's the integration, and then the extension.accdb, which you probably won't see on your desktop in Windows because by default, Windows turns off the extension. The extra, well, after the dot here, the name that tells the operating system what program to open up this file in. In any case, if you want to learn more, you can watch my Windows training video on extensions. But there's the front end because I don't see the underscore BE, which is over here. There he is, all hiding, and you can see underscore BE. So there's the back end, which just stores the raw data or only tables. So what we find in here is the front end, that when we want to take a look at the data that's organized into forms, or reports, or even the tables, that it all comes looking for this guy right here on the desktop. So let's double click, and he only has the tables right there, raw data, nothing more.
Now it's recommended that you create your switchboards after you split the database because it's best if the switchboard table resides on the front end and not with the rest of the tables on the back end. And why? Because, you know, you can customize the switchboard. So if you're customizing it on the back end, you're customizing it for everybody. And hey, maybe not everybody likes it. So go ahead and create your switchboards on your front end after you split the database so it's proprietary to just your front end and not annoy anybody else. Or if they don't like your switchboard or the way it's been set up and they want their own way of doing it. Now, you'll probably want to watch the next training video because I'm going to show you how you can break up your database. In other words, we have it split right here, right? But you want to learn how to take the back end and put it on the network in another folder and then reconnect it so you can have the front end user access that back end. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.